This video is going to cover connective tissue, which is the biggest section on histology. Uh, going to cover a couple extra things, and the last video is going to be over muscle and nervous. So connective tissue is the biggest group. Like it says, they're the most abundant by weight. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about the four classes of connective tissue. We're going to cover each one, bone, blood, all of these cartilage. Uh, connective tissue does have, it's called a ground substance or extracellular material or matrix here uh, between the cells. So one characteristic in the last video, ah, um, we were talking about epithelial tissues. They're all very close to each other. Connective tissues are spread out. Like this is bone, and you can see the dark areas are called a lacuna. That's where the osteocytes are, and you can see how spread out they are. Uh, um, some other characteristics. Uh, connective tissue has fewer cells and more extracellular matrix. I just did that. Uh, they, for the most part, have a really good blood supply. And that, you may think, well, wait a minute, what about cartilage? Cartilage is not. Uh, cartilage, tendons, and ligaments are the exception. They don't have a very good blood supply. That's why they do not heal back very well when they're damaged. Whereas, uh, of course, blood is a connective tissue, but bone, other areas, have a very good blood supply. Um, there are different fiber types and cell types. I'll show you just a few of those as we go through this. And uh, like it says here, it can be broken down into three components, the ground substance, what's called the extracellular material, the fibers and the cell types. Um, functions for connective, um, supporting and moving, yes, bones help with movement. It's a big support tissue, and we'll go through that as we go through. You'll see like ears, vocal cords, uh, cartilage supports all kinds of things. Uh, storing, adipose does store energy. Uh, as far as fat, fat is used for energy, bones can store minerals, calcium phosphate, and also they can be transporting as well. Okay, now starting here, there are what are called three fiber types with connective tissue. Now, unfortunately, this PowerPoint, and I might change that around at some point, but let's start here first. Uh, we'll go over the cell types. I'm going to follow the the outline, and then yeah, we'll go to the cell types. All right, so there are three types of tissue, well, what are called connective tissue fibers uh, that you find in connective tissue. Collagen or uh, collagenous, which is the one that's in our PowerPoint slide, see that? They're thick, composed of collagen, and this is not the greatest picture, but you can see those there, not the yellow, those are elastin, but Collagen fibers are usually a white color. They have great tensile strength, which means they resist pulling, and they do. Um, that's what ligaments and tendons are made of primarily and some other and types of cartilage as well. Uh, they hold structures together. That's absolutely true. But um, that's, a, that's a fiber type you find in some of the stronger tissues. Um, elastin, well, and I didn't mention this, but these have collagen. That's why they're called collagenous fibers. Elastin has a protein called elastin. You can see it there. They do kind of stain a yellowish color, and like I said, this is not the greatest picture, but you can see those there. Okay, they're not as strong as collagenous. They're much more flexible. The outer ear, vocal cords, areas that have to stretch, um, Things like that that have a high abundance of what are called these um, elastic fibers. And then you have one tissue type that kind of combines the two of them. And this is the same picture. I need to probably find a different one, but um, reticular fibers, they have collagenous fibers. Now, they're not really that thick, but they are strong. And they also have some um, elastic fibers as well. So they're called reticular fibers. So they have kind of a, these are mixed together between collagenous and elastic fibers. So there's three fiber types. The uh, cell types, uh, adipocytes, which is a fat cell, and adipose, I'll show you that. A fibroblast, which actually makes connective tissue fibers. Now, in your PowerPoint, this is supposed to represent a uh, fibroblast and they lay down new connective tissue fibers. 
They're the ones that form scar tissue. You ever heard of that? Somebody has an injury or something, and um, they're, the body will fill in areas that have holes or damage, and that's what scar tissue is a lot of times. Um, this is a cell type called a mast cell. Now, these cause inflammation. They release heparin, which is an anticoagulant, which increases blood flow to an area, and they release histamine, and histamine is a biochemical that makes capillaries leak fluid, so it causes swelling. And the whole idea of inflammation is to try to keep an area localized so it doesn't spread to the rest of the body. It's part of the healing process, and it's also part of the immune response. And then you have a macrophage, which macrophages are big, giant white cells that eat other cells. Now, a macrophage is actually a cell called a monocyte, but a macrophage is just sort of an activating cell, and it, it moves in and out of connective tissue, uh, 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 excuse me, connective tissues, and it helps clean them out. And this is kind of a crazy picture, but you have several macrophages eating this giant cell. It kind of, you would think it'd be the other way around, but it's, you have several of them attacking this. Okay. So, we're going to go through each one just like we did with the previous video. Oops. I hope nothing pops up as far as I just clicked on my Adobe. So, there's macrophages, mast cells, fibroblasts, and I will show you an adipocyte. So, yeah, those cell types, make sure you know what their functions are. So, here's the very first connective tissue. It's called loose connective tissue or areolar tissue. It has two names. It's called loose connective because it's all spread out. Um, the main, okay, location for this, definitely between muscles, um, but it's found right here beneath the skin. It's a layer that helps hold skin to the body. What is its function? Uh, support, and the main function would be binding skin to underlying tissue. And it's called loose connected because it's all spread out. And you can kind of see by these pictures uh, there's collagenous fibers, there's some ground substance, there's elastic fibers. That big thick band is supposed to be a collagenous fiber. This is the real picture from our lab. And you can see, look, here are all the cells. See how they're all spread out? They're not right next to each other uh, like with uh, epithelial cells. But you can see these big fibers. Those are collagenous fibers. But this is not a super strong tissue. I mean, it has to have some strength to it. but. Uh, it's, you know, depending on how big the animal is, but for human beings, it would be fairly strong. All right, adipose looks like chicken wire. Um, where you find adipose is everywhere. It's around all the major organs. It is in what is called the subcutaneous layer under skin. It's an insulating layer. So skin is the epidermis and the dermis, and then uh, what's called the subcutaneous or hypodermis, that's where you have adipose around kidneys, behind the eyeballs, mammary glands, on the surface of the heart, mesenteries, it's found everywhere. Um, we used to dissect cats and to uncover kidneys, you had to uncover a layer of adipose. Um, adipocytes store lipids, so they do store some energy. And the function is basically energy storage, protection, and like it says there, insulation, Yes, it is an insulating layer as well. It's part of skin. Uh, it's not part of skin. It's part of the layer below skin. And it really doesn't look like anything else. Uh, adipose looks like, to me, chicken wire. So there's the textbook version. So here's the drawing. Here's the real thing. All right. The zoo is now leaving. All right, so here's the drawings of adipose, and each one of those would be an adipocyte. And then there's the actual tissue. And that's kind of an up-close uh, version, but this is what it would look like in our lab class. And so here you have, I don't know, 10 adipocytes. So the nuclei get pushed over to the side because when these fill up with lipids, but you see all that in there, there's some lipids, there's some lipids. So um, that's adipose. So on to the next one, reticular, which to me this looks like a cherry blossom tree. Where do you find this? It's uh, the lymphatic organs, really. 
uh, livers. Now the liver is not necessarily part of the lymphatic system, but the liver, spleen, um, lymph nodes, lymph vessels, uh, which is the lymphatic organs. But think about when you're sick and your lymph nodes swell up. Uh, flexible tissue made of reticular fibers um, function. Reticular tissue supports and forms a flexible framework of the liver, spleen, lymphatic organs. And that's what it does. It is support. Uh, the liver can swell up. Spleen can swell up. And so, um, you know, due to infection. But this is what it looks like. And like I said, here's the drawing version over here. You can see the reticular fibers. Remember, they're a combination of collagen and elastin. And there's the real picture, and this is actually a really good picture. This is one from our lab. The dark lines are reticular fibers, and all those little purple-looking dots would be the nuclei of the cells that make up that are the reticular tissue. All right, so dense regular. Now, this is kind of an interesting one. This is where you find, this is what's made, uh, excuse me, tendons and ligaments. And ligaments connect bones to bones, like the anterior cruciate ligament connects the front to the back. And then tendons connect muscle to bone. So dense regular, to me it looks like some wavy hair. Thick bands of collagen that are oriented in one direction. The function would be to basically, I mean, it's support, it's strength, but it's also binding body parts together. Uh, resist stretching and give the tissue considerable strength in one direction. Yeah, I mean, it's basically trying to keep bones together and muscles together. So here is the textbook version. There's the drawing. Those are fibroblast nuclei. Remember, a fibroblast is a cell that makes connective tissue fibers. There's the real picture, and then here's one from our lab. Now it's going this direction, and you can see how they're oriented. See how they're all wavy? And like I said, the dark, see those dark areas you see there? Those are fibroblast nuclei. And then there's the, the line with that. So that's dense regular. <clears throat> um, okay, now we're about to talk about three types of cartilage, and then we're almost done with connective. Highland cartilage, they have little, uh, what are called chondrocytes. Um, that's a cartilage cell. And where you find, okay, well, here are the locations. The ends of long bones, definitely. That's called articular cartilage. Cartilage rings of the trachea, which is the windpipe. Coastal cartilage, which is the rib cartilage that holds the ribs to the sternum. Nasal cartilage, the nose. Um, it says growing long bones. Um, Yes, I'm sorry, the epiphyseal discs. But um, basically all bones start out as hyaline cartilage. But the articulating surface is talking about the ends of bones. Large amounts of collagen. Um, as far as function goes, support. It does provide support for the trachea, bronchi, ribs, and nose. It forms the embryonic skeleton. Yeah, baby, baby bones, embryo bones, uh, prior to being born or start out as highland cartilage. And this is one of those, it doesn't really look like anything else. Uh, it looks like our slide here is going to have all three. This is highland up here, and it does kind of sometimes stain a pinkish color. The matrix part. Those little dots are chondrocytes. Those are cartilage cells. So this is highland cartilage. This happens to be over here elastic cartilage. And this is fibrocartilage. So here is, now this is just a band. So this tissue up here, don't worry about that. And then the tissue beneath, don't worry about that. We're just talking about this middle section of cartilage there. And those are chondrocytes. Those things look like little bitty eyeballs. Those are hyaline cartilage, those are chondrocytes. Elastic cartilage is much more flexible, has more elastic fibers in it. The external ear, which is also called the pinna, or auricle of the ear. Um, I don't know why that's on there twice, I'm sorry. But uh, the auricle, or pinna, P-I-N-N-A, -N -N and the epiglottis, which is a flap of cartilage that folds over the glottis when you swallow food. And also the vocal cords are also made of elastic cartilage. 
um, provides rigidity <clears throat> with even more flexibility than Highland Cartilage. Just think about your outside of your ear. When you bend that down, um, it does you know bounce back up again. So um, let's see. Well, like I said, and there's elastic. It does stain this dark color. You can see in there the chondrocytes. See the little eyeball looking things in there. You can see those. Uh, fibro cartilage is the strongest of all the cartilage. It's these big blue strong fibers. Where do you find this? The intervertebral disc, the symphysis pubis, which is the cartilage that holds the um, it holds the hips together in the front, the pubic bone part. Um, yeah, the menisci of the knees, uh, tempomandibular joints. So these big blue fibers here, and then this is actually that picture is actually on uh, the low power so it's way way compared to the other pictures as far as the cartilage goes um, anyway that's um, so that's uh, there's the nuclei but that's uh, fibro cartilage okay we're almost done um, bone <laughs> don't mention the location of bone bones of the skeleton middle ear there are the ear ossicles in the middle Rigid tissue with a mixture of organic collagen fibers. Yes. Uh, bone has collagen, and it has calcium phosphate and calcium carbonate. And calcium gives bone the hard, rigid texture that it has and the strength. Well, collagen gives it strength. Uh, calcium makes it rigid. Yeah, provide great strength and support. Forms a framework for the body. It also helps with movement. And we'll go through all these with the skeletal system. Provides a storage area for calcium and phosphorus ions and produces all blood cells. Yes, red bone marrow makes all blood cells. White cells, platelets, and um, red blood cells, sorry, erythrocytes. So there's bone. Um, this is actually compact bone. There's an osteocyte. But when compact bone is formed, it's formed in circles like this. This whole thing's called an osteon, so you have a whole bunch of them together. There's a picture from our lab. This whole thing is one osteon. This thing's called a central canal. And then the osteocytes, which are bone cells, they're found there in what are called lacuna inside here, and those uh, little depressions in bone, and that's where you have what are called osteocytes. <clears throat> Now, last connective tissue, um, blood. Blood is a liquid connective tissue, or fluid matrix, I should say. What does it do? Well, where do you find it? Uh, system of clo closed vessels, the heart chambers, obviously. Uh, blood vessels. Um, transports oxygen, which are gases. It does help with uh, fight infection, immunity. That's where white cells are. And it does help in blood clotting for platelets. Blood's pretty easy as far as identifying on a slide. So there's a white cell, there's a platelet, and there's a red blood cell. So this is actually called a leukocyte, a white blood cell. These are erythrocytes, or red blood cells. And then there's a platelet. So, And then there's the real picture. You can see there, and this is a little bit further away, um, those little dots could, are most likely platelets. I know that is for sure down there. And the darker cells are white blood cells. I know they're white cells and they're darker. And then all these others that you see are erythrocytes or red cells. But blood transports gases. It helps with immunity and with blood clotting. All right. So I'm going to start here next, and this one will be short.